inaugural ceremonies at the new home of the Army's tank destroyer unit, the last word in fighting power. The commanding officer, Major General Andrew D. Bruce, has formally accepted the camp, and now the flag-raising ceremony is to climax the impressive event. The star-spangled banner that will fly from the Camp Hood flag mast is a handsome garrison flag, 20 by 38 feet. The men who will each day salute this flag are the men of the Tank Destroyer Center, trained here in the latest methods of destructive fury to conquer the enemies who would tear down this very banner. The flag is raised. Camp Hood, Texas is officially launched. And here are the tank destroyers for which this center is fast becoming famous. Giant fighters mounted on half tracks. Their Uncle Sam's answer to Hitler's tank column. Once feared, but today, targets for the tank destroyer. To train more and more men for the operation and maintenance of the tank destroyer is the job cut out for Camp Hood. As the tank destroyer is a half-track vehicle, great stress is put on speed-up operations for changing a track. It's a known fact that almost every outfit in the Army now has half-track vehicles. So the new methods developed at this center attract great interest. The accent is on teamwork and speed. The instructor orders a typical two-man team into action and they take to the task of removing the track with lightning efficiency. A job that once took hours, reduced to a matter of minutes. Six men were once required for this type of assignment, but the new method perfected by the automotive department of the tank destroyer school has changed that. The students see for themselves and quickly learn how a track can be removed by only two men and in faster time. the track be put back with equal speed? The answer is effectively given to the students under more realistic conditions. Camouflaged, the tank destroyer races to make believe attack at battle speed. A jeep cuts across the tank destroyer's path. It skids and comes to an abrupt halt. The track has been thrown. It has to be replaced without lost motion. Only two men are needed, so the others can spread out and stand guard while the mechanics go to work on the track. Whenever possible, it's best to back the truck alongside the track, which weighs 350 pounds. Now the soldier mechanics really get going in their race against time. The outside man loosens the stud nuts on the idler outer flange. His partner, meantime, has been loosening the anchor pin and is now removing the adjusting rod outer nut, preliminary to jacking up the vehicle. The outside man completes the operation of removing the idler outer flange. Now, they're ready to jack up the vehicle. The outside man knows just when to put the steel block into position, which prevents the bogey wheels or lower rollers from sagging. They're ready to set the track into position. The seconds are racing along, but they're ahead of the record. Here, then, is the test tube for all future half-track operations. Every army man knows that the tide of battle may hinge on just this type of repair work and how fast it can be done. Efficient handling of the pry bar helps to get the track back on the drive strut. The pry bar also forces the track guides into their groove. 
The men now combine their efforts to get the track into position on the rear idler. Tying up, a backward rotary movement and some foot power do the trick. Next, the idler outer flange is replaced. Jacking down, they're into the home stretch, and the stopwatch says they're ahead of the old mark. The jack is passed on to force the idler into tight position for the job of guiding the adjusting rod into its bracket. Systematic cleaning and lubrication of parts helps make this job less difficult. The outer adjusting rod nut is put on and tightened. Then, he fixes the wrench for the anchor pin nut. His work finished, he rushes out front. While his partner tightens the last of the stud nuts, he releases the jack. And the well-coordinated job is done. A new record has been set, all right. They've replaced the thrown track, and the vehicle is rolling again in nine minutes. It's a record for half-track men everywhere to shoot at. And Camp Hood is proud that its men are setting the pace. Now we join the tank destroyer in battle maneuvers. The destroyers carry powerful 75 millimeter rifles that are to fire at targets 500 to 800 yards afield. How to stop a tank for good is the lesson to be learned for this demonstration. The targets are make-believe German tanks towed on range tracks. destroyer half-track, rumbling monster of destruction, dedicated to victory, quick and sure, thanks to American mechanical genius and our military efficiency.